Right, hello. Uh, in this video, I wanted to talk about uh, Aaron Schwartz's script, uh, keepgrabbing.py, which you can see on the screen right now. Uh, I wanted to go through this. Uh, I was watching the documentary, The Internet's Own Boy, not too long ago. And in that documentary, it talks about how uh, something that Aaron Schwartz did was he went into MIT, the MIT campus, and he stuck a laptop in a store cupboard and he was downloading loads and loads of PDFs uh, from academic journals because there was this thing called JSTOR, which is a database of uh, academic journals. Um, and the MIT network has access to it because obviously students need to download these academic journals. But he thought that basically we should, these things should be free. Uh, you have to pay for them if you're not, you know, if, if you're not um, connected to a university network. Um, the universities have to pay as well for them. So he connected his laptop to this network and what he then did is decided to just download the shit out of every pdf he could find so i wanted to go through the script because it, it mentions a script um and there are some court documents that show what the script is uh so we're going to go through it what it's doing how it's working um and we'll go through it now so it's called keep grabbing.py uh, if you go to the link in the description you'll be able to find an annotated version of it as well as the actual version that i found on the internet um, so if we start going through this, so firstly the language it's being written in is Python. It starts off by doing a few imports. The imports are subprocess, URL, lib, and random. Uh, what subprocess does is it will basically allow you to create a new process from within your script, your Python script. That new process created from the Python script process is called a subprocess. It's a child of the of the Python process. So we can use that to do things you would normally do at the command line via Python. URLlib basically defines a whole load of things we can do with URLs, like make requests. Uh, that's what he's using it for. And then random generates pseudo random numbers. And we'll get to why he's doing that in a bit. The next bit is the second line. And the second line um, is just defining one thing. It's defining a class that is an exception. The class exception is the no blocks exception. And what happens when this gets raised, so if you raise the exception, if this exception occurs, is this script will just stop. I'll get into why I think he's done that uh, when we go down a bit more. The next thing he's doing is he's defining this function called get blocks. Now there are three lines in this function. The first line is uh, defining a variable called r. And what he's doing here is calling the url lib dot uh, url open uh, function and he's calling some URL. Now, this URL has been redacted um, by the courts. From what I can figure out, looking at this, it looks like this is a list of PDFs, is gonna be, a list of PDFs that Aaron Schwartz controls. It looks very much like he would have had his own website that he set up, stuck a page on there called Grab, which is why it's got Grab. Like It would be very weird for JSTOR to have their own URL that had grab as the the actual page, so I think this is this is Aaron Schwartz's own website or his own URL, um, and I think what will have been on this page will have just been a list, a text file, most likely of just PDFs he wants. Um, and so what it's doing here is calling this, and what this uh, URL open will return is a file-like object. Um, so then this read function basically reads um, the contents of the file. Uh, and, and we'll store it in this variable called r. The next thing that happens is you'll check if uh, a HTML tag is present in this new variable. If it is present, then he will raise a no blocks exception and just stop the script. Now, I think the whole reason for him doing this is so that he can remotely turn the script off for whatever reason. I'm not 100% sure why, but that's that's one of the reasons I think he's done that. Uh, and the next thing that happens is this uh, function returns r.split. So um, r.split, split is a function in strings uh, in Python. So let's say we have uh, a couple of strings. Uh, we have, um, you know, uh, hello world. Well, that's one string. If we were to call dot .split on that, what would happen is we would come out with a list of two strings, hello and world. It splits them uh on spaces by default, which is what's happening here. He's not passing any arguments, so he's just splitting them on the spaces. So this get blocks returns a list 
of what I think will be PDFs, their names of PDFs or something like that. Okay, next what's happening is he is importing uh, the sys module. Now the sys module basically allows us access to uh, functions and arguments that are present in the actual computer that's running the script. Um, and what he's actually using this for is to get uh, arguments from the script when you run the script. Um, so this is the sys.argv that he's calling here. sys.argv um, is basically a list um, that has the arguments of the script. It also has the script name. That's the very first thing in that list. So what he's doing is when, if he needs, uh, if there is an argument here, he's calling the first, the second thing in the list, which is index one, because um, index zero is the name of the script. So what he's saying here is, if the length of the system.args um, list is greater than one, meaning there's the file name and I've actually passed some arguments, is basically what he's saying, then what we want to do is we want to define this variable prefix um, to be equal to a list containing the string SOX5. Now SOX5 is a proxy. Uh, and whatever this argument would have been. Now this argument I would have been some sort of proxy. Um, so what this is then going to get done is this, this prefix value would get passed through the curl command that's going to be used later in the script. Uh, if, if there are no arguments of this script, then what's going to happen is he is going to simply uh, define this prefix as uh, an empty list. And what's going to happen here is that he, he's left a comment here, or I think this is his comment. It was in the court documents. Um, this, to me, suggests that he's just connecting via the computer's Ethernet cable uh, directly. Now, I think the significance of this if-else um, statement here is that it suggests to me that he could have ran the script from outside of the MIT network via some proxy, maybe via the laptop that he had connected to the uh, MIT network itself. Uh, that's just speculation on my part, though. And the next thing is is probably um, the most confusing bit um, for a few people. Uh, it certainly was the first time I saw this, because it was ages ago that I first saw this. Um, this next line defines a lambda function called line that will be called later and what it's doing it's called a lambda the lambda takes one argument that argument is going to be a pdf uh, file name and what it does is it uh, first defines uh, a curl request so a curl request is basically curl is a command line utility that's on linux systems or and what it does is you can basically um either download things or upload things to URLs. That's simplest level, that's what it is. So he's, he's defining a curl request. And remember, this is gonna get passed to a sub process. So it's basically gonna get run like it will get run on a command line. Uh, and then we're gonna pass that prefix. Now that prefix is either gonna contain his proxy or it's just gonna connect via the, uh, the ethernet. The next thing he's doing is defining a cookie. Now the cookie is going to be uh, the string tenacious plus a random uh, three-digit character, um, three-digit number, and basically what this is going to do is basically tell the server that he's connecting to that this is like a real request. The server's going to go, oh, we have a cookie, this is probably from a real user, um, as opposed to being from a script. The next thing he does here is there is a uh, minus O. The minus O in the curl request means uh, define the output. So what he's doing here is he's saying, where do we want to download the file to? It's going to a folder called PDFs. He's then passing in the string, uh, the argument of what he's passed to, which will be the, the PDF name, whatever that was. Uh, and then after that, the next thing that gets down, uh, passed over here is the URL where the actual PDF was kept. So, He's got uh, the, the JSTOR URL plus the PDF name and then .pdf and then uh, what else is in the URL. So that's that's what's going off in the Lambda. The last thing that's happening here is the important point of part, part of the code. That part of the code is the while loop. The while loop is an infinite loop. It just says while one. What that means is just carry on forever because one is always one, right? So this is just going to carry on forever. So he's going to say, we, first we're going to call get blocks. Get blocks is going to get us that list of PDFs again that I've mentioned earlier. It's going to save that to a variable called blocks. Then we're going to iterate over those blocks. 
for every single PDF we find, we'll just iterate over them. What we'll do is we'll print out the block, the, the name of the PDF, and then what we'll do is this little bit of code here. This little bit of code, subprocess p open, then pass in that lambda function, and then wait. So what's that doing? Well, subprocess.popen is opening a new subprocess from that Python process. So it's opening a child process from the Python process. Um, and that process is going to be that curl request that's defined in that lambda. So we're calling line, and then we're passing in block. So that block is going to be that, that string PDF name that we know about. So line.block is going to basically return a curl request um, string basically that we can then oh, well it's going to return what's going to turn into a curl request that's going to be a um, process that's going to be run separate from this um, python process what's going to happen is that is basically just going to download that pdf to that folder we've mentioned the pdf folder with its name and the last thing it will do is it will say dot wait dot wait is basically saying don't continue with the python script until our sub process exits so when the file finishes downloading, that subprocess, the curl request, is going to exit. It's finished, which will mean this script will then carry on going back to the for loop and going round and around and around. And that is how this script is going to work. So there are a few other things I wanted to just sort of mention about what I thought potentially could happen here. So he's got this while loop. So it suggests to me that he could basically keep this script going all the time. He could change this URL to have either no list of PDFs or you could just pass it a whole series of PDFs, however many that was, it probably quite a lot of PDFs. So it will just carry on going and going and going and going and going. And he has this, what I think is the kill switch, which is if I change what is present at this URL to a HTML page, then we could just kill it remotely. And so uh, that is the script. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Uh, I'll try and answer them all, although YouTube is terrible at telling me when I have comments. Um, this will be the script will be linked in the doobly-doo uh, as well as an annotated version where I've gone through line by line and like annotated it in detail what I just done there but but in text form uh, right so yes that's it as usual I can't end the video I'll just carry on talking I don't actually stop so I'm gonna stop right now out of a detchy